called me like so many different names this week. I was <laughs> junior on Monday. <laughs> you know, the, the, what you called me just now? I told you hurt, man. Oh, you just called me hurt. That's all I called you this week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, 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 okay. I, I did call you junior. Yeah, yeah, you called me junior. Yeah. Shout out to you, Pops. Yeah, man. My dad had a lot to say about that. <laughs> I thought his name was Macy. Oh, yeah. 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 You gotta introduce me because I'm bringing some eargasm to you today. That's right. Y'all ain't ready for what we like were Coach Cooper. Ali told uh, listening, get up, you bum. I'm here. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready for Coach Cooper, man. That's Coach right. Michael Cooper's in the building. Oh, What's up, God. Wendy? What's going on? Uh, you, you ready? And yeah, she over there doing something. She ain't got oh, no business right. doing. <laughs> wow. Really? You gonna call out like that? Man? Really? I'm just saying, y'all listen. Y'all know what I'm going through. <laughs> and y'all just keep bringing vices and stuff in here. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, but you know, hey. What you going through, Maceo? Coach, so I dedicated my life back to fitness, Coach. Uh-huh. And, you know, I'm, I'm doing all the right things, Coach. <laughs> That's what I used to say. <laughs> and then I just let it go. <laughs> hey, Coach, man, you, everybody's ready to go. Maceo, we got a phone call, man. Yeah. Right. Already? Yeah. Hey, Carla, what's your question on? Oh, you know what I'm crushing on. What's up, Mike? Man, Macy O'Glaze, I'm crushing on Khalees' victory tomorrow. Right, Congratulations, right. man. South Fulton, hey, I was, a, I was very proud holding that sign out there on the campaign trail, man. I felt like I really made a difference out there with the votes. Congratulations to your family, Mike, your brother. All right, Glaze, tell Macy look, we, it might be some more signs. We got to go hold now, Macy <laughs> Hey, man, listen, <laughs> man, I'm all about the community, the streets, and, uh... Whatever Wendy got in his bag. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Chicken sandwich over there. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say to Mike, you know what, Mike? It, that's Mike is the caller, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Mike. You got that very white, sexy, neat, <laughs> thing. Really, boy. I'm just, I'm just making me. Hey, I just make it through what it do. <laughs> that's doing something to me over there. <laughs> that's right. Hey, man. We talking about eargasm. <laughs> yeah, Mike. <laughs> Hey, man, you, as you can see, man, Coach Cooper's going to have a lot of day, man. So, again, Mike, congratulations to the family, man. Tell your brother, man, congratulations from us, man. So, All right, then. Tell him I still need that job. <laughs> All right. Love you, Mike. <laughs> what number do you right. call us at Mace? Hey, man, Mike, call the show at 678-613-5857. Yeah, man, as you can see, man, we're going to have so much fun today. Coach Cooper's in the building, man. Hey, I'm glad he got you in, Coach, you know. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Time is limited because I hear you got some other guests outside. So I'm gonna oh, try no, to get you the best yeah, I got. Yeah, yeah, no, we we we, we, we gonna stretch we, you we out. You locked in. We got you stretched. We got you locked in, coach. That's coach. How I used to stretch Larry Bird out when I played <laughs> all the way out, stretch him out, all of them. So Dr. J got a hold of me and dumped on me, and then I had to come back to reality. <laughs> so, you know what? Somebody, uh, Carl had just brought up. He said, you know, know. Ask, ask Michael Cooper about the Dr. Dr. J. Yeah. You know what? And, and I'll say this: and if people watch that whole segment of the film and they watch how I go had I been able to get up and get turned all the way around that would have been the greatest block of all time but you know what Doc got me but you know what I'm not mad Maceo about that I'm <laughs> Coach, not mad because Coach, you're every a time they show, listen every time they show that dunk I get them checked <laughs> <laughs> I get paid Maceo just like you and you with James Brown he said Maceo blow your horn you got paid <laughs> <laughs> but it was a heck of a dunk. That was hey, probably. But what if people don't realize your head was at the rim already, yeah, though, no, Coach? I like the way Doc was rocking the cradle on me, but you know what? But your head was at the rim, though, Coach. But Coach, your head was at the rim. But that don't mean anything. Nothing <laughs> happened. I'm, I'm gonna go on and get this out. Okay. What you did to Andrew Tony, though, you had to lock him up like that, Coach. You know what? I, I say this. Uh, people always ask me who's the hardest player you've ever had to guard, Coop, and I say, you know what? Um, a lot of people, Michael Jordan when he was young, George Gervin, Iceman, obviously Larry Bird. Uh, I have to say, Andrew Tony was up Ooh. there with the best. Until that young man blew out his Achilles heel, yeah, oh man, he was something. Because they used to call him the Boston Strangler. Because DJ, Dennis Johnson, the great defensive player, yeah. late great defensive player, couldn't handle him. Andrew Tony was a handful. Hey, man, we're about to take us a quick break, man. And when we come back, man, you hear what you say. Yeah, we're jumping into Michael Cooper, man. We're Let's jumping go. into Cooper. Stay with us. It's the crush. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. 
Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool. And by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You've accidentally cut your daughter's bangs unevenly. Do you, A, line things up a centimeter from her hairline? Man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. No, 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 no. Sweatbands are so hot right now. Everyone's wearing them. Like that basketball player and that other basketball player. B, get spiritual. Mom, where did all the mirrors go? A reflection could never capture our true selves. Huh? Beauty is within? Um. C. Look on the bright side. Less time blow drying, more time texting. Or D. Show empathy. Mom, you really don't have Ta-da! to. Ta da! Twinsies! <laughs> I kind of love it. <laughs> As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. You don't usually get a stock tip from a 16-year-old, but I'm here to tell you about a different kind of stock. It's called Better Futures. A stop for social change that's not about making money. Instead, you invest to help students like me go to college. This is beyond a simple donation. It's the opportunity for America to invest in its kids and take an active stake in the future of the country. The return on your investment isn't money. What you get back is knowing you protected our potential. So one day, that potential can grow up to become surgeons and architects, executives and engineers. People who can change the future just by being a part of it. My name is Alicia, and I am your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. A public service announcement brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. You know you're listening to the dopest show on the airwaves, right? You're my boy! It's the it's Crush. The crush. SSNATL.com. Thank you, sir. Man, we're going to this question interview brought to you by ORC Software. The ORC team is committed to providing full life cycle support for developing, testing, and delivering market-driven products. ORC's motto is when a customer engages one of us, they engage all of us. Go to ORC, O-R-A-S-I.com for more information. Maceo, please introduce our guest, sir. Hey, man, our guest is only a five-time NBA champion. That's all. He also <laughs> was NBA Defensive Player of the Year. Also a five-time All-Defensive First Team. Two-time WNBA champion, man. WNBA coach of the year, man. This guy, he's just a winner, man. All he does is win. My guy, your guy, our guy. Coach Michael Cooper to the microphone. What's up, coach? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> coach, let me ask you this, man. Start off as a coach this year. Um, we all expect big things from the dream this year, but Angel being out, what are the things that you guys are going to look for and pull the team together? To do this year? Well, I think uh, championships are won as a team. Right. And obviously, Angel's a big part of our team. And again, uh, the decision she made, we won that supports uh, her decision. Uh, the, you know, the problem we have with our league is that our ladies play overseas uh, mm -hmm. eight, nine months out of the year. It's right. almost like they're playing year round. Mm -hmm. right. As you become an older player, that can become taxing. So, again, her decision to rest her body to give us something for the future is going to be good. But uh, with that in mind, what we're going to look to do is, uh, you know, obviously always try to play as a team. But I think defense is going to have to be our staple. Uh, we'll have to find, and I used to love this because when Magic or Kareem and Worthy went down, uh, Pat Riley said, hey, there's 20 shots. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got to shoot the ball. Somebody, somebody got to shoot the ball. <laughs> so that's uh, about 20, 22 shots that's not going to be there. So yeah. <laughs> some of our players, Sancho Little, Tiffany Hayes, uh, Bria Holmes, some of yeah. our, our vets that have been there, hey, y'all got an opportunity to up your scoring uh, average a little bit and uh, – Get you some shots. It's always some fun. Shots. You know, you don't want to always play defense and yeah, rebound. 20, 20, 20 you should right. be able to shoot the basketball. Yeah. So, some, we're some buckets out there. The scoring buckets. is going to be done. <laughs> 
<laughs> as a whole yeah. instead of just one. Yeah, that's what's up. So, Coach, just talk about Tiffany Hayes for a second. She plays outstanding defense. She she does it on offensive end of the way, but her defense it stands out so much. Just talk about the type of player she is, Coach. Well, I think with the vacuum that Angel has created by not being there, I think this will be an opportunity for Tiffany to take center stage mm-hmm. and to really come up and do some big things consistently. Uh, she's always been kind of like a behind-the-scenes person, mm-hmm. uh, taking second fiddle to Angel, but this is her chance to – and Tiffany's a great player in her own right. I mean, there's a couple of games she had for us, uh, 30, 35 points, 40-point right. games. So this is an opportunity for her to really step up and become – offensive force in the league and let people see what she's about but just to be our uh, uh, emotional leader in a sense too because Tiffany is a very emotional player she's always on the officials and you know uh, but when I first got here I was trying to curb that but that's her and if you take that away from her she can't be herself so Mm -hmm. I think uh, letting her be her and and the more amount of minutes that she's going to get drawing up a a couple more plays so she can get opportunities to score is going to be good for her. Now, Coach, you went to Syracuse to get your first player this year, Brittany Sykes. What is it about her that made you think she'll be a good part of the team? She reminds me of myself. She's a defensive demon. And this young lady, Brittany Sykes, can play. I think she is a triple-double waiting to happen. I think we all saw what Russell Westbrook did this season in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Tiffany, uh, Brittany Sykes is that same type of player. She'll go get you 10-plus points. She can go get you 10-plus rebounds, and she's a great passer. So uh, we couldn't pass on that because she brings the whole thing to the table. And we were looking for that as knowing that Angel wasn't going to be right, here. Right. We needed somebody that can come in and kind of play that three spot as well as do a good job defensively for us. Oh, Coach, we have a question for you uh, off uh, Facebook Live. Uh, what made you start coaching ladies instead of men? Um, you know what? I When I first heard about the WNBA coming into existence back in 1997, this was probably about 94, 95, I had retired by then and wanted to get involved with more like behind the camera. Mm-hmm. Um so I was doing that, but then I heard that that was going to happen. I actually went out to a couple of games out. They had a say no classic. Rhonda Wyndham was our general manager for the LA Lakers. Mm-hmm. She had opened a league for women, so that was my first opportunity to get involved with women. And this will be my 18th season in wow. the WNBA okay. uh, involved with women. And I love it. I always say there's two things about women. Uh, one, they smell good when they come back to the huddle. So that's why I'm always talking time out. Like, women smell good. Imagine Shaq coming back over there dripping all that sweat on you and stuff like that. And last but not least, they look good in their uniforms out there. On the floor. <laughs> I love it. Hey, man, we just get started with Coach, man. We come back, man. We're going to talk more about that. We also, man, we got to talk about them, a little bit about them later, yeah, what, what he can talk about. So we'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> JBT 700 Miami Circle 30324. It's not a chain, it's a chain reaction. Invest $49 a month at a real gym. For more info, go to facebook.com forward slash jeans body tech. I am an American soldier. I'm a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always finish first. I will never accept defeat. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined. I am disciplined. Physically and mentally tough. Trained and proficient in my warrior task and drill. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert, and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the, the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. They're strong, and there's Army strong. See what it takes at GoArmy.com. Marie Kellender's knows that you may not have time to roll out dough for a perfectly flaky crust that's made from scratch. Or enough time to mix vegetables with all-white meat chicken and a homemade gravy. She knows you may not have a moment to crimp the edges of your favorite chicken pot pie. But Marie Callender's does. And when she's done, all you need to do is find time to grab someone special. Sit down and savor. Marie Callender's. 
it's time to say. My savings are gone. Okay, where were they last? Here, right before I spent them on the vacation to Aruba. Weird. Not weird. Not saving now means no money later. For free ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. This is Amar Batman Karen. You listen to The Crush, the only sports radio show that they're going to keep it real in the A on Sensation Station Network. Hey, man, we're back, man. Sitting here doing our interview with our coach, Michael Cooper. Man, before we get into it, we're going to shout out Hard Work Apparel. Hard Work Apparel was designed to unlock the psychological elements of drive, desire, and determination at 3D effect, which is necessary to push the body and mind to its optimal level of performance. Once you wear Hard Work Apparel, you'll subliminally feel obligated to work at a higher level. Please visit hardwork.com, H-A-R-D-W-U-R-K. And what's the motto, Maceo? Man, hard work ain't easy, baby. We're still here with Coach Man, and we were just talking about the WNBA season, Coach. And we've been... We want a title here, Coach, man. We really want one in Atlanta, man, and we feel like we're getting close. Your thoughts, man, you're going to get us one this year, right? Well, you know what? Uh, I like to think that I know what it takes to win championships uh, at the levels that I've won, and, you know, we're slowly but surely putting the pieces together. Every year I'm going to say we're going to win a championship because that's how hard I work. That's how hard I push our team. Right. Uh, but real quick, I would like want to deviate from some. So that hard work apparel, if myself and Maceo will put that on, can we lose weight if we, I mean, will that? Yeah, that's what we say, man. Yeah. So he wears it when he works. I work out. I work. I wear it every day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need to lose about thirty, and I'm being Coach, straight honest. I mean, you, how Coach, just see why I started. There you go. You got to see where you round yeah, yeah. the rebound like Charles. Yeah, you, you got to see why I started. Like right yeah, Coach, Coach, Coach. I had to let it get out of okay. hand. Coach. Well, you know what? You're gonna be a champion just like we are. Right. I, I want a, a parade down Peach Street Street or yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't care where about. they give it. I want it, and we're gonna get it done this year. Coach, we need it. I'm, you know what? I'm not gonna be go out as far as Pat Riley. He guaranteed our back to back championship. But you know what? We're gonna push our players hard to get there, and uh, anything can happen in this game of basketball. Okay, Coach. We've got another question for you uh, from Kareem Mayo. He wants to know, which current NBA player reminds reminds them of you? And who during these playoffs uh, do you did you look forward to playing the most? Uh, the one player, and I was a better shooter than he. <laughs> 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 What's the boy from uh, OKC? Uh, uh, he wears number twenty one, actually. Oh, uh, uh, I didn't think of his name. I knew you were talking about. What's my man name? Uh, the defensive specialist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He reminds me a lot of myself, but real long. But he shoots a lot of air balls. Yeah, he I, does. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit the rim. I didn't make all my shots, <laughs> but I hit the rim. But uh, he would have to be the one. Uh, but I think the most. Uh, once the playoffs start, and I was telling my wife this the other day. I was sitting there, we watching the game, and I was saying, you know what? I don't miss basketball until this particular time mm, because right. the camaraderie. Mm. The uh, togetherness, the cohesiveness, you getting ready to go out. And I don't want to call it war, but to go out and compete, yeah. mm-hmm. that's what I miss the most. But I get that back with our women because women, you know, play the game truly below the rim. They compete at a high level. And, it's, you know, on any NBA team, you have your superstar players, you have your your grunt players, you have your, your, your system players. Women don't have that kind of echelon in the league. It's all women play hard all the time. Right. And they truly play the game below the rim. They're fundamentally sound. And uh, that's the difference of why I like to coach in the WNBA. But uh, this is the time that you like for things to get going and get your blood flowing, especially in the playoffs. Do you like the WNBA playoff format that y'all had last year? You know what? I think it was a shakeup and it was different. I loved it because, again, now every game is important. Where right. before, when they had the East and the West, then you had to kind of like, okay, we could afford to lose, uh, split the LA series, or <laughs> and you got to play New York with big fat Bill Lambeer. <laughs> who I can't stand to this day simply for the fact because he was on the Bad Boys. And you know what? Bad Boy, how you come up with that name? Why, why couldn't they be bad men? Bad <laughs> boys are bad boys. You smack them around and <laughs> send them to their room. And Bill Lambeer is that. So we always have our heatly contested uh, confrontations. And, uh, you know, hey, uh, I like that. Yeah. So the format is good. Makes you play hard every single every game. Every game. <sighs> Make sure you got something to say. You just over here giggling and stuff. I mean, because, Coach, you, you, you're so hilarious. You, I mean, you made me laugh since you come through the door. Eric, go ahead. So, okay. Coach, who was the one when you was out there playing, you knew that you might have to put them paws on somebody every time you were getting? On all of them. I used to <laughs> fight big guys. I didn't fight little guys, you know. <laughs> Calvin Murphy taught me that. We play, <laughs> fought against him. Little guys are fast. You know? <laughs> Big guys, James Donaldson, I fought him. Uh, Patrick Ewing, I had a skirmish with him. Uh, some of the big, I used to like Bill Lambert Bahorn. There was a picture of him grabbing me by my throat. And I had him by his big old <coughs> 
shoulders, you know, his neck was big as his shoulders and stuff. So I had him about like that. So I used to like to fight the big guys or just be competitive. But you know, no one was gonna push us around. No one was gonna uh, do the do the things to prop to disrupt us from becoming a champion. The, the Showtime era. How great was LA? How great was being in LA? Knowing the Showtime era. You know, it was fantastic basketball, but the Showtime era was created by the whole NBA. I think when Bird and Magic came in, they made passing a part of the game of basketball. Mm. Mm. And you look at the teams on the West, we had the uh, Golden State Warriors were good with Sleepy Floyd, the Seattle Supersonics with Gus Williams and Dennis Johnson. You had uh, the Clippers, they're going to be the Clippers. I'm a closet Clipper fan, too, so. Really? I don't, I don't come out the closet too much. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you had a lot of teams in the West that were very good. And then you look at the East, you had Dr. Dr. J, the Sixers, Boston the Bird, the Pistons, uh, Cleveland Cavaliers were good, Atlanta Hawks with Dominique and Spud Webb. You had a lot of good teams. So back then, you had to come play every single night. But the pace that we tried to play at sometimes offset those teams beating us. Because mm. we came out and, you know, if you're going to play with us, you got to be run. able to run. And mm. run, run, mm. run. Say that again. You got to be able to run. Yeah, you can say it one more time. got to be able to run. There you go. You got to preach about that. Yeah. So is that your style? But when you, I know defense is big for you, but as a coach, do you look for your team when they got a chance to run the ball, get it out there? I, I want to go. I want to get up and down the floor. I think the excitement of the WNBA is that women can play at a high level. They don't bring that excitement as far as the slam dunks and the alley-oop, but the style of play, yeah. the pace of the game, uh, setting picks, working, everybody working to get a good shot on the basketball, that's what fans want to see. So we want to get out and put some points on the board. My dad always says, if you want to really see how the game of basketball should really be played, watch the women because you get to see how the offensive sets and yeah. how the defensive oh, the rotations, everything's supposed to be. You agree with that? I definitely agree with that because they truly play below the rim. And, you know, you know you've had a couple of players, uh, Candace Parker, Lisa Leslie, Brittany Griner now that can dunk. But you know what? That's not the fun part about the game to me. It's moving the ball, working the shot clock, setting picks for each other, and making the game easy so you can score layups or get wide open shots. I'm tired of watching these guys come down and hawk up all these threes. <laughs> and then they want to talk about they making millions of dollars. We'll it's right under back. my skin. We'll right back. <laughs> Tacos, a cheese, and a large soda. That's $10,012. Please drive around. Wait, 10000 what? It's obvious you're buzzed and driving. I've only had a few. I'm fine. Yeah, the food's 12 bucks, but getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Please drive around. Actually, just park and come in. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. being bullied online you can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool and by letting your friend know you care learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org brought to you by the ad council i'm more resourceful than i thought my suit can still make an impression my video games are still game changers and my lamp can bring others a bright future because when i donate my stuff to goodwill it helps fund job placement and training for people right in my community. Now my stuff gets a second chance. And will give someone in my community a second chance, too. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at goodwill.org. That's goodwill.org. This message brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. I'm Fred Camillo of CBS 46 Sports. You're listening to The Crush on the Sensation Station Network. Hey, man, we're back. Still here with you. Coach Michael Cooper, man, five-time NBA champion, two-time WNBA champion. The rings, baby, the rings, rings, baby. all over the place. Hey, Coach, is it true? Okay, uh, say that again, five-time NBA champion. Two-time WNBA Two, champion. And I won a championship in the D-League. He, he sure did. did. The, the only rings. coach, only player-coach combination to ever do it. Yeah. Michael Cooper. Cooper got them all. Yeah. I didn't mean to jump on y'all. NBA. About that. Yeah, I'm not. Coach, coach. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's right there in my notes. Okay. What are you see? supposed to say that, Macy? I was, I was so happy. If James Brown saw the team messed up like that, <laughs> you would be fired. <laughs> I was saving it, coach. Coach, what did I do? Macy, you blow your horn. They say back in the day, did Magic play defense? No. 
And <laughs> <laughs> Magic was not a great one-on-one defensive player. What he was, though, is Magic was a great team defensive player. So whenever we needed the ball to be double teamed, the late great Moses Malone when he was with Philly and with Houston, Magic was good at that. He'd go down and double team because he's a big double team. Yeah, yeah. He played the passing lanes well. But as far as a one-on-one defensive player, I mean, he could hold his own one or two dribbles, but I think when people start giving him some stuff, he would get by. But that's why we were always there. People have a tendency to say that I was a great defensive player, but I was only as good as my teammates because I couldn't guard everybody one-on-one for 24 seconds. But when they got by me, Magic was there to fill that gap. Worthy was there. So uh, team, a good being a good defensive player requires your whole team to play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about getting out on that break. Everybody always talk about you got to keep your eyes up because you never know when Magic going to get you the ball. Just how was that knowing that it, it, it could come? True story. Uh, back, uh, this guy named Joe Cooper, no kin to me, <laughs> big guy. He's about seven feet tall, and he joined our team back in 1983. And every training camp, Magic always told all the new people, he said, listen, if you're cutting through the paint or you're going to, you know, you get into the paint, get your hands up because I, I can find you. So Joe Cooper was like, okay, okay. Practice was going through there, and he cut to the middle, and he had posted cream and came to the middle and had his hands down, and Magic threw that basketball and busted his nose <laughs> wide open. And, you know, everybody started laughing, and Joe goes, well, what y'all laughing about? He said, because Magic done told you, get your hands up. <laughs> he was, and I've seen some other ones, but Magic Johnson was probably the best passer that I've ever played with, and I've been around this game a long time and seen. There have been some great ones, but Magic could do some things with the basketball yeah. where it literally looked like it disappears for a second and reappears in Jamal. And Jamal Wilkes was always the recipient of a lot of those passes. Yeah. Then it became James Worthy, but he was an excellent passer. Coach, you, what made you take the Atlanta job when you decided to, when you came down to the dream? Uh, it was an opportunity. I had coached uh, in L.A. twice with the Sparks for uh, four, five years since. So I had been there nine years. So I just wanted a different challenge, a different opportunity. Mm-hmm. This Atlanta Dream Team had been to the uh, WNBA Finals uh, three times. Great core group. Uh, coach a great player like Angel McCarthy and be involved with this. But, you know, we got two great owners and Mary Brock and Kelly Leffler who really support the women's game and women's uh, basketball. Uh, and when I came in for my interview, they just sold me. And I enjoyed, I've enjoyed every moment that I've been here. Mm. The championship pedigree, everybody always talks about once, you, once you've won one, you've won a few. It's like that just you, you kind of rub that off on your players. How, how important – is it to have that championship in your pocket because you know how to, you definitely know how to win one? Well, that's what it is. You know, when you win a championship, you know what it smells like, what it looks like, what it tastes like, what it feels like. Mm. And those key ingredients are something that you can only get when you win and you've gone through the wars to win one. So uh, being uh, at the top level and being winning championships all these years at different levels, I have that feeling that, you know, when I tell the ladies or, or anybody I'm coaching, my son's AAU team, too. I let them know that well, this is what you're going through. This is what you're going to come up against. But you have to stay steadfast. And you have to believe in the commitment and uh, just keep pursuing your goal. And again, championships aren't made. They're developed. And you mm. have to do that. And just like being a sidekick, you know, watching Magic Johnson with the parties in L.A. You know, Magic was like a rock star, man. Mm. Just kind of watching. I was married back in the days, but I know a lot of single guys used to just hang around him and catch the ones that fell off to the side. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> now he's a happily married man. Now, but yeah. I'm talking back in the 80s. Right, when he was single, right. And Ooh. Magic lived the life that we all want to live. You're a superstar, you're 6'9, and you're in LA, and you. our parties were better than the Hugh Hefner's parties up at the Playboy Mansion, man, at the Showtime at the Lakers, the Forum. Am I telling too much? No, oh. Coach. That, that's what they want to hear. Y'all went back like. Give you a little taste of it. Okay? That's what they want to hear, Coach. I'm going to give you just a little bit of it. We'll be right back, man. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, and father of five. I'm also an expert on drama. There's a good kind that comes with having a house full of kids, and there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. And lead the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Adopt US Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You've accidentally cut your daughter's bangs unevenly. Do you A, 
line things up a centimeter from her hairline. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. No, 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 no. Sweatbands are so hot right now. Everyone's wearing them. Like that basketball player and that other basketball player. B, get spiritual. Mom, where did all the mirrors go? A reflection could never capture our true selves. Huh? Beauty is within. Um. C, look on the bright side. Less time blow drying, more time texting. Or D, show empathy. Mom, you really don't have Ta-da! to... Ta-da! Twinsies! <laughs> I kind of love it. <laughs> As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. One in seven Americans will struggle with addiction during their lifetime. Want to know how you can help? Go to heretolisten.com for tips and tools to help turn addiction around. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council. Hey, Crush fans. I'm Taisha Fernandez. You're listening to The Crush on Sensation Station Network. Time for the Hot Seat Hotline. Four, three, two, one. Hey, man, we just going to throw some more questions at Coach. You've been funny so far. So, hey, so let's start it out, man. What you got for him, man? Uh, the jokes A.C. Green used to receive. <laughs> <laughs> When <laughs> you know, AC was a, a celibate, his yes, first couple of years in the league, so our, he was just about hey, we were hurry, hurry up and get to the hurry up and get to the hurry up and get to the room, hurry up and get to the hotel room. We check in, I'm out. Yeah, I don't want none of those problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm not in the lobby. <laughs> Which was worse, the Boston Garden or the old palace at uh, Boston Garden? Dead spots all over the floor. You used to love to play the though, great place to play. The Palace was okay. The Silver Dome was Silver Dome, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. God, it was so windy in there. And <laughs> all this shot terrible in there. <laughs> bad. How bad did you hate Larry Bird? I can't say this on radio, but <laughs> okay, I still <laughs> liked <laughs> him a lot. I disliked him a lot. Disliked him a lot. But also with that came a lot of respect, too, because you have to respect the great ones. How much did you dislike Zeke? Isaiah? Yeah. I disliked him. Especially when him and Magic started kissing. You know, like, <laughs> I, I, I wasn't a big fan of that. But again, you know, that goes back to them knowing each other. Yeah, right, right. right. Back, but I uh, wasn't a big fan of his either. <laughs> uh, but I played against him. But you know what? He broke a record on me on a bad ankle. He had 25 and a quarter. Now, if I wasn't on him the whole 25. <laughs> right. I, I came in once he got hot. But when he was hot, it was on. Mm. That one right there, you, you took my Isaiah question away my bad, from me. My bad. Well, Coach, let me ask you this. The first time you was able to walk as a coach and get that championship trophy, how was that feeling? That was great. 2000, I was one, 2001, won it with the Sparks and Lisa Leslie, who we worked hard. Obviously, the first four championships were won by the Houston Comets. Right, right. Cynthia mm-hmm. Cooper, Tina Thompson. Loaded. And Cheryl Swoops. Uh, so to get that first one was just we had arrived, and again, you know, we were among the champions, and, you know, I kind of hated that the Sparks won last year, but, you know, <laughs> it, you know that's one of those things. And but I you got them at home, Coach. You, I you, told you. them in magic. Well, they were scared of us. Yeah. They didn't want to see us. <laughs> Definitely did. They were, did. They were Definitely praying did. that you, uh, we blew the game to Chicago, and Chicago was a good team, and, and they won that one. Coaching at USC. Uh, women's basketball at the collegiate level didn't, didn't really like it because of all the recruiting. And uh, oh, okay. you have to have a lot of uh, chapstick because all the butts that you have to, uh, uh, you know, talk to and things like that. And, you know, the AAU coach, the high school coach. The oh, uncle, it's worse the, now. Oh, the, ooh, yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> I threw all my cases of the lip balm away. How do you feel about AAU? I think it's uh, widely overused for the kids. That's a lot of basketball for these kids to be playing. Sometimes they play five games in one day, uh, seven games in two days. I just think it's not good for kids. And again, you lose the fundamental aspect of basketball. Because a coach in the AAU, all he wants to do is get the, the best six, seven players, let them out on the let floor and give them a little system and just let them play up and down. And then you got those kids that aren't as athletic as those players that you have that, that, that are on the bench that don't get to play unless it's a blowout. So I, I just I didn't like it. And I think it should be better... Uh, Structured. Interesting. Wow. Wow. Hey, so, Coach, uh, when you, young Jordan comes to the league, your first thoughts, because you got him in early young days, Michael Jordan. Michael was a, a phenomenal 
athlete. Uh, at that time, he, you only had to play him when he had the basketball. Uh, that's why I say Larry Bird is probably the hardest player that I've had to because Larry could beat you away from the basketball with a rebound or something. But as Michael Jordan got better, and as he got older, I'll say, and he couldn't jump over the rim anymore is when he got smarter mm. and became more of a fundamentally sound basketball player. But the young Jordan was just, ooh, man, he was... I'm just glad I never got posterized by him. <laughs> Every time he went to the basket, I turned like I was going to sub out. <laughs> I didn't want to get caught in that picture. Coach, I'm good. <laughs> you hang up on somebody, Cameron's wall with a big old yeah. Michael Jordan with his tongue hanging on the side. And who's that back there, that dark guy? Oh, that's Michael Cooper. <laughs> hey, man, we'll be right back. Major key alert. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchooled.com. Brought to you by Get Schooled and the Ad Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you, A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do this to you? And for Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie. This is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take charge. Got to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve. It's now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. People are always looking to invest in a good opportunity. So what if you could invest in the future of kids, like a stock? Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change called Better Futures. With your investment, it helps students like me go to college. My name is Charles, and I'm your dividend. Invest in Better Futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. Hey, y'all, what's up? This is your girl, Erica, hanging out with Maceo and Glaze on the Crush. Sensation Station Network. We'll talk about that in Hey, man. We still here with Coach Michael Cooper, man. Hey, man, so you still got another highway for us, man? Yes, man. So, uh, Maury Gamble wants to know, do you like how soft the NBA game has Ooh. become now? NBA is put it that way. I think, again, I couldn't have played now. I like to lay hands on you and keep my hands <laughs> on you and let you see my fingerprints and then put some more hands on you. But uh, I think the, what the league has done is that they want it to be more fast-paced game, and I think they want to curb and cut out all the violence. But I still think it actually is a little bit more physical now that the playoffs started. Mm. Yeah. Was Reggie Mills a trash talking? Only against the mother team. Yeah! <laughs> To uh, Spike in New York, he trash talks against us. Yeah, he I shut Reggie's little thin butt. Me and Reggie together only weighed about two twenty, <laughs> and that one ten was me. Yeah. Coach, the 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 Laker aura when you guys would like go in other arenas. Cause I remember like we would always come when, when you guys would come to the Omni, and it, it would just be like. You just you could feel show. the presence yeah. of the Lakers yeah. in town. Did you guys feel? Did you guys feel like rock stars going on the road? Yeah, I was. You know, it was a lot of fun. I think it kind of uh, parallels what the Golden State Warriors. When you look at them go around the league, the arenas are sold out. People want to see how they play and, and want to see them because you know the East Coast you only get to see them once, and on the West you get to see them many times. But mm -hmm. back then it was like they. We, it was a new style of basketball that fast tempo up 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 beat. Then it got to where Kareem was on his uh, end of the uh, career tour. So people were coming out. It was an amazing feeling to be part of that and, and to see all that happen. They suck now, though. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to watch them. Yeah. But you know what? Magic Johnson's at the helm. And no, he's not going to bring Showtime back, but he's going to bring that aura around Showtime. And I think with a couple of, you know, we got a very young team out in Los Angeles right, now. Yeah, right. Enjoyed watching them play this year. A few minor adjustments, but what I think where he's going to be pivotal for us is that he will bring in that uh, free agent veteran that can come in, that can really uh, be the glue to what they have. You know, you got a lot of young kids and they don't know how to win. If you put a couple of veterans with them, the energy that the young kids bring, and then when the game is on the line, your veterans can take you take across over, the finish right, line, right. that's going to be important. Speaking of coaching, you played for one of the greatest of all time in Pat Riley. How is he, what did his 
coaching do to you and help you in your coaching ways today? Pat Riley was very good with attention to detail. He was very good when we got into the playoffs, a lot of video film work, not too much practice. And those are some of the things that I carry into my coaching. But you know what? Pat Riley had an easy job. All he had to do is keep uh, oil in his hair, <laughs> look good on the side, make sure the officials uh, stayed off of us, make the right substitution, and he had it going on. That's why he stayed there so long. But Coach Riley was really, really good, uh, and he was a very good complimentary piece to what we had there. Yeah. Your, your thoughts on Kobe Bryant? Uh, sensational player. Uh, I think Kobe uh, got caught up into a lot of things that toward the end of his career because I think had he made it like – probably three or four years before he retired, made a couple of adjustments, mm -hmm. sacrificed some money to bring in some players that would have helped him uh, along the way. But you know what? Probably arguably one of the best players that's ever played this game uh, at a guard position. They be hating on Kobe, head coach. Yeah, they do. But you know what? Kobe brings that. Everybody hates a, a, a winner. Mm. You know, that man come out and drop 80 on you in the game. You don't hate him? <laughs> yeah, I hate him. I don't want to see him beat up on my team no more. <laughs> Cameron over here about to pass out. Yeah, yeah. Cameron not a Kobe <laughs> fan. She not Cameron, Kobe. take that bad look off your face. <laughs> Let me cross your arms. Kobe <laughs> Bryant was good. Better than LeBron. No. Oh! Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's why you. That's why I coach my guy, y'all. That's why he my guy. Make sure what happened yesterday. Hey, LeBron's that, pretty good, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he ain't no Kobe. Ain't no Kobe. Nope. There it, it is. Make sure what happened yesterday. We really had a different answer, but we. Really <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were like, man, really? Come on, man. Let me fight up in here. Let me referee up in here. Hey, man. Hey, we about to take another quick break, man. Then we're going to finish up with Coach. It's been so fun, man. Thank you. Stay with the crush, man. When it comes to saving money, don't act like a baby. Goo goo gaga. Be the boss and make a budget. I'm the boss, baby. You're the boss of me. I am the boss of you. Or not. M2. Or not. M2. <laughs> Need a little help? Aren't you going to do any work? I'm very busy delegating. Create a personalized savings plan. We can share. You obviously didn't go to business school. And get other tools and tips at feedthepig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Listen, as a hiring manager, I've got to tell you, the best job candidate isn't always the typical candidate. Sometimes they're a grad of life. Meet the grads of life. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Sometimes the best candidates aren't the ones you're used to. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. People are always looking to invest in a good opportunity. So what if you could invest in the future of kids, like a stock? Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change called Better Futures. With your investment, it helps students like me go to college. My name is Charles, and I'm your dividend. Invest in Better Futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. This is big business. This is the American way. See this is Bobby Yala from the Ohio State. I'm kicking with the crush on Sensation Station Network. Hey man, before we go, we got uh, shout out to Vince Wright. To, he play, you know he's on our uh, Sensation Station with the HD. Yes, shout sir. out to you, bro. Hey, uh, do we got a call? We working on it. We working on it. Still here with our bad coach, man. So, caller, Maceo. Hey, caller, what you crushing on? Hey, uh, Macy on Glaze and Coach, I'm crushing on the show, and I, I had two questions for the show. Yes, sir. Uh, first question is for Coach, you know, what what, what would they have done to Swaggy P back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> first of all, he'd have caught it in practice. All right? <laughs> he'd be praying out there. Uh, but no, Swaggy P is a, a very talented player. I just think a lot of antics come with him and when you're trying to accomplish a championship you can't have all that distraction that goes along with mm. him uh but you know what he can shoot the basketball uh nick showed that he's a pretty decent defensive player when he puts his mind to it but he uh yeah we, we just straightened him out in practice <laughs> blocked his shot a couple of times what else you got for us mike and they, uh, for, for you, uh, Maceo and Glaze, I, I hear a bunch of Patriots players didn't make it to the uh, White House the other day. Uh, heard about 20 of them. Yeah, yeah well, you know, uh, 12 didn't go, so that that's going to be the story. Yeah. I'm boycotting, too. I ain't going. <laughs> 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 hey, 
Hey, man, thank you, Mike, man. <laughs> All right, then. Hey, man, what number did he call that, man? Man, he called the show at 678-613-5857. So, Coach, what can we, as we wrap this, what can we look forward to for the dream this year and what, are, you know, people need to come on out, man. Win the championship. That's what we're going to do. There uh, it is. You know, we changed venue because Phil yep. Arena is under construction, so we're over at Georgia Tech, mm-hmm. uh, McCain Arena. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Fans, come on out. Training camp starts on the 23rd. Y'all going to give out the dates for the op- home opener? You got oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We got all that. Okay. We got all that. I, Coach, I just want to get in the figure eight drill when we go to camp. You got to wear some socks, mate. So yeah, oh, I, 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 I have my socks by the end. You know cap. what? If I had nice calves like you, that's why I wore long socks. I'm not skinny. So, but, uh, yeah, we, we go have early found on. We have early. fans that come on out, yeah. uh, coming out and see the Sparks. I mean, uh, oh. <laughs> see the dream. Nice. We're going to beat the Sparks. Yeah. Uh, come out and see the dream. It's going to be an exciting season for us, and we got a lot of new players that they got to get accustomed to, and we're going to put out on a team that the fans of uh, Atlanta can be proud of. It's always a good time. Like I say, we, we cover the dream. And, and it's always exciting. I'm actually happy we're going to be in McCambridge. I just like the yeah, atmosphere in McCambridge. It's like Still everybody comes to the floor. That college atmosphere is real yeah, intimate yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So, I mean, that'll be fun. When first, you guys going to come to the game? First home y'all, game. Is, how, many, how many games are y'all going to oh, we, we, we see the ticket holders. Hold up. So, so, home game is when? First home game, Sunday, May 21st against the Chicago Sky. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> mm. Make sure y'all come out. We will make all of them. Except for Monday, Tuesday, we in the code because we do the show here. But yeah. the other day, we there. Tuesday's 8 o'clock. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be there all the time. y'all can leave and other yeah. come a little later. Oh, you know what? Like that. We can send our photographer. She can cover yes, it. Sir. Bam! There you yeah. go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we sent Cameron. Cameron? Y'all, Cameron come on the plate. Coach, put me in. Put me in, Coach. Put me in. I say, hey, hey, hey. You're not eligible yet, okay? And what I like about the schedule, <laughs> the, uh, the 21st, 27th, 31st are all home games. All home games. Mm-hmm. So you guys should be able to come and enjoy it. McCamish, you know, I love McCamish. It's going to feel good. Coach, we appreciate you, man. We just love my you coming on. You got to come back, man. But, uh, you know. I'm going to come. Next time I come, I know you have my uh, associate head coach here, Carlos yeah, Thompson. Carly. Y'all got to get us together. And it's going to be I don't know if we're ready for that, coach. Wow. I don't know if we're ready for that, coach. get a bucket of water over there. So <laughs> <laughs> start blazing up in here. Just throw some water. Oh, we weren't ready for Carlene, we'll coach. Down. We weren't ready for She was off the sound. Y'all weren't ready for me either. No, no, you know what? That's okay. I'm good. I'm cool with that. <laughs> we Cameron know. cooled me down a lot. Right, Cameron? We, yeah. we we got we got to talk about getting coach or uh, uh, like a weekly call in or something. Yeah. We we'll, we'll talk about it. We we'll, we'll yeah. talk about it. I I, I, I got to love to call we, in. We are gonna show up on Sunday. We'll be there. Oh, we'll, yeah, we'll be there for the first one. We'll be there. I, I was telling him when he first came in the way he handled his press conference after the game. Comedy. Yeah. Straight straight comedy <laughs> after the game. The truth. I just, yeah. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys so much for having me. Sensation Station. Y'all play good music. You need to play some more so I can really. I know three moves. Okay, the shopping cart. <laughs> I know the lawnmower, and I know the sprinkler. <laughs> Those old men moves, like 50 Cent say, same two steps with a little twist. That's all I put on it. Hey, man, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Indoor baseball, anyone? Most party fouls are pretty dumb, but if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Learn more at ultimatepartyfoul.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hey, Dr. Phil here. You know, I help people solve difficult problems every day, but one problem has me stumped. Childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. Luckily, the Feeding America network of local food banks collects surplus food, giving hope to hungry children and their families. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Coming to Tampa Bay, I said we want to win a Super Bowl, and I believe we will. From IamSecond.com. We came close, but never really did win that championship. Former NFL head coach Tony Dungy. At the end of my sixth year, I was fired, and it was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Next year, I'm in Indianapolis, get to the playoffs, but get knocked out again. And for the next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have Christ first and that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it. And it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm going to make it through the lens of Jesus Christ. And he guide us to that ultimate victory. 
I'm Tony Dungy, and I am second. My savings are gone. Okay, where were they last? Here, right before I spent them on the vacation to Aruba. Weird. Not weird. Not saving now means no money later. For free ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Hello, everybody. It's Rodell Lewis. Invite you to join the Jen and Rodell in the ATL show on SSNATL.com. As we simulcast with 247PraiseRadio.com. Saturday starting at 8 a.m. Oh, my God. It's a taste of tradition where we play great gospel music, great artists, interviews, and a lot of fun. Oh, that's wonderful. So join Jen and Rodell in the ATL as we get our praise on 247PraiseRadio.com. Simulcasting on SSNATL.com. This is Robert Hicks, ex-NFL football player and actor with the blind side, and you're with the crush at SSNATL.com, Sensation Station Network. Hey, man, we're going to this crush run now being brought to you by Cricket Wireless. Go to CricketWireless.com or any store, can't miss the store, to find out about all the specials and deals they have going on right now. Cricket Wireless, something to smile about. Maceo, please introduce our next guest. Man. So, the name of the program is First T Atlanta, located right in your neighborhood. And so, how this came about, we always talk about options that kids, that we need to give our kids. Yep. You know, everybody can't dribble, everybody can't run the football. And then, so, me and uh, my good friend, Michael John Herndon over there on the side. So, we had a nice conversation. Everybody talking, well, golf is a country club sport. No, it's not. So, first tier, Atlanta finna come and tell you <laughs> why it's not. Coach, take it away. Gotcha. All right. So, my name is Janae Jenkins. I'm the program director for the first tier of Atlanta. And as Brother Macy so eloquently stated, golf does not have to be a country club sport. We are located at John A. White Golf Course, located at 1053 Cascade. It's In your neighborhood. Southwest Atlanta all day. Um, and what, what our program is at the end of the day, we are a life, a uh, youth development program um, that uses golf as the hook. So while we're actually <clears throat> teaching the kids how to play golf, um, at the end of the day, we're more invested in uh, creating the next great leaders, the next great generation uh, of kids using the game of golf as the hook. So, Cause, cause, yeah, because the tagline said it's still life enhancing values yes, and yes, promote healthy yes, choices through yes, the game of golf. Yes, that's us. I'll tell everybody, how long has the program been going on over there? So here, here's the thing. When we say the program, there's a couple of things that, to, to differentiate. The okay. program itself, uh, the first tee program has been around since 1998. Wow. Um, there at Johnny White. But before that, um, there's a gentleman within the community. He recently passed away by the name of Elijah Walker. Mm. Elijah Walker uh, was a great guy, a great man. He introduced golf to kids in the inner city for years before there was a first tee program. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how it all came together. When the first team fir when the first tee first came on the scene, they said, "Who are who's already serving the kids we want to serve? Mm. They came down to Johnny White. Slapped the name on it, helped with sponsorship, kept the things going. That's so, what's up. Yeah. Now, people, you know, we they talk about golf clubs and equipment and this. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. again, I'm telling you, listen, it's not hard to get clubs today. No. Nope. Not nope. at all. Not at just, all. Just talk about where can people go find this equipment because you don't have to go to Dick's and go get you a uh -uh. big Bertha. Uh-uh. No. What you, what I always tell our parents and our kids in the program, the first thing you probably want to do, check eBay. Mm. Uh, you can go on eBay because uh, at the end of the day, especially if you're just getting into golf, at the end of the day, all that equipment and the technology that's in the equipment, it's not going to make a lick of difference if you never learn how to actually hit the golf ball. Right. right. So I always tell people no need to go out and get the most expensive stuff until you get an understanding <laughs> of what right. golf is. Right. You right. know, to get a big burger can you swing. Right. 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 No, ain't no need to spend four hundred fifty dollars <laughs> on one club. <laughs> And it's only going to go 10 yards. Yeah, you'd be like, wow. Right, yeah. Got all that money. Slice. Right. It's not going to make a difference. <laughs> now, you start off with a, with eBay, get your little used club for $25, mm -hmm. learn the basics of the golf swing. Mm -hmm. And then once you start making connections, now you know exactly what type of swing you got, what kind of shaft you need, and then you can really, really get into it. So I um, always tell people, man, don't, don't go out and jump into the deep end. Don't don't jump don't jump off the porch just just yet. <laughs> get in that kiddie pool yeah, real quick. Just stay over there, learn, get your stroke right, get yeah. your stroke right. Um, Which is let me just go because I first yeah. heard about it because we have mutual friends yep. that said they had their kids in it. Yep. How many kids do you have currently in the program? 
Last year, we served 1,017 kids. Wow. Um, Whoa. So, yeah, we do kind of the way, the way our program works. We do three sessions and a summer camp. Um, so within those three sessions, we're going about nine to ten weeks each session. Um, in each of those sessions, we're going to serve about 250 kids. Wow. Um, those 250 kids in each session are being served at several different locations throughout the city. So our home base is out of John A. White mm -hmm. in Cascade and Southwest Atlanta. But we also have classes over in Browns Mill off of Cleveland Avenue. Okay. In uh, Southeast Atlanta, we got classes in Gwinnett County and Collins Hill. Um, we have classes in Lithonia over at Mystery Valley and East Atlanta over at Sugar Creek. Now, sign the registration is getting ready to start. Yes, yes. Talk yes. about the registration. Registration uh, will open up on Tuesday, April 24th. Mm -hmm. Begins at 9 a.m. It's uh, all automated, all done online. So it's a first come, first serve deal. So when you, uh, the, the cool thing about us, even though it's golf and, and you touched on it being a country club sport is what people think, for $75, that's going to get you 10 weeks of classes. Wow. $75 one time. You pay $75 a morning registration, first come, first serve. I don't care if you make half a million dollars a year. I don't care if you make $75 for 10 weeks. That's all we charge. Um, and in that, um, additionally, somebody would pay $35 for a uniform shirt. Shout out to the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's right. That's right. Got to right. Got to right. But, uh, but no, the, the shirt is kind of built into what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And it, like, like you talked about with the, the life skills of it, having to call a shirt when you go to a golf course, you got to have it. So yes, you do. This now. Um, so for a whopping, if I did my math correctly, $110. Mm -hmm. Get you a collar shirt. And collar ten shirt. Weeks of training. 10 it, weeks of class. And, and this is what I want people to do. Call any golf course, mm -hmm. any public golf course. Mm -hmm. Ask, find out how much it costs <laughs> to play a round. <laughs> And then you're going to go back and say, well, you know what? For my kid, for send for, like I say, for the 110, mm -hmm. and they're going to be playing golf every Right, right. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. The other thing about it is uh, I would venture to tell people to call and ask about lessons. Right. Um, lessons themselves can run up mm. to $55, $65, mm -hmm. $75 an hour. Right. So we're talking about in our classes, like I said, we, uh, we're 9 to 10 weeks. We only do classes on Saturdays. Um, so for that, for that parent who's like, man, I'm busy. I can't get down to Southwest Atlanta at any of these golf courses. When I get off work, don't worry. We, uh, we only do programming on Saturday, all locations. We got different times. So it's something that something will fit your schedule somewhere, uh, somewhere around it. So you sitting around here killing everything. They ain't got no excuses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 no, nah, it's, it's on a Saturday. <laughs> if you need golf clubs, I got them on deck, whatever, whatever you need. Oh, we here. kill it all. The excuses here. right now. Boy. Question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so if I sign up for a Saturday, mm -hmm. am I in a certain time slot every Saturday? Yes, that's the only thing. So one of our nine core values um, is respons responsibility, <laughs> right? So one of the first ones we, we try to teach our participants is when you say you will be somewhere, mm. you need to be there on mm. time. Right. Um, and so everything we do, we do it in the context of golf. So in a game of golf, if I'm playing in a golf tournament, I have five minutes after my tee time to get there. If I'm past that five minutes, I can't play. You can't play. Right. So our attendance policy reflects the same thing. At the beginning of every session, I speak for about five minutes, break the kids off into their groups. So if you get there after I've broken the kids off into their groups, okay. sorry, got to go. So we're going to finish up with you on it when we come back Definitely. after this, but because I got to ask, the kid got to be there on time, but the, the parents, <laughs> we're, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stay with us. Uncle Dan, Mom, Dad, if you store your guns properly, so not just anyone can get to them. I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. Safer when my friends come over. As your neighbor, I'll feel safer. As a school teacher, I'll feel safer. We'll all feel safer. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. 
Now we come to the special feature of our program. Sensation Station Network. We're going to our second hour being broadcast right here on Sensation Station Network and also on WBLZsports.com. Let me give a shout-out to our boy, Dr. Kevin Dancy. If your smile is becoming to you, you should be coming to us. Dr. Kevin Dancy has been practicing dentistry for 16 years in beautiful southwest Atlanta. Office is located at 3752 Cascade Road, Suite 190. Complete family dentistry with everything you need in one office. Call and make an appointment at 678-836-2118. That's 678-836-2118. Again, guys, so let me ask that when you're instilling these nine principles and yep. – one of them is timeliness, and you got the kid. The kid's going to probably be all geeked to get there, but you still have, the, I don't know, too many five-year-olds driving cars. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> How do you get that to get across to the parents? So here, here's the thing. If you, if you imagine as a parent, um, I know we all got a lot going on. All this got kids running, ripping and running. Uh, but the moment that your child is upset, it kind of clicks with you. So we've had situations where a parent has been gotten there six minutes late. I won't let him in class. And the kid is crying and the parent is upset. But as a principal, exactly, I kind of, and I tell the parent, I know the kid can't drive itself. Like, this is on you. Understand that the, the thing about the first tee in Atlanta, the first tee of Atlanta, we are family. So it's one of those things, I'm not just going to put it all on the kids. I'm not just going to put it all on the parents. See, it, it kind of goes together. So I always tell our parents, the other thing is, if you don't make this a priority for your child, your child isn't going to make it a priority. So it, it's one of those things of, we're going to make this commitment together. Go off with a lesson. Boy. Yeah, you know, that's, that's what it is. That's Coach, what it is. Yes, sir. Talk to me about the Tiger effect and how it really just opened the floodgates for golf, Ti for, for our kids. What's funny is, man, actually, I'm a product of the Tiger Effect. Cause it's funny because you said basically like when the date, when we first yeah, started, I was, I, was right. Right. I was about to say, so here, here's yeah, the thing about the first the tee. <laughs> when, it first, when the first tee first started, the, the, uh, the mission was completely different. When it first started, if you go YouTube some of the old commercials, it was strictly for inner city youths right. and introduced them to the game of golf. And over years, it kind of it, it changed to what it is now as a youth development program. Um, so at the core, when it first started, it really was just to get more of us interested in golf. Right. Um, and then once we started really getting into it and seeing how it affected kids and the different principles kind of came naturally, to be honest. Okay. Um, so okay. the first tee is actually born out of that Tiger Woods rush. Um, so mm -hmm. my even with myself, I if you would have told me I'd be working in golf, I would have looked at you like you was crazy. Man. <laughs> I went to school with the with the intents of going and, and working for the Hawks. Basketball was my sport. I couldn't think about golf. I thought it was the stupidest thing, but the PGA Tour had a minority internship program mm. trying to get more minorities in golf. Mm. Um, and once I started working in golf, I realized, if I'm being honest, as a black man in golf, I'm a hot commodity. Yes, you yes sir. So yes, once, sir. I, once I saw it, I was like, oh, man, this is really cool. And that kind of drew me to get into the first tee of Atlanta to kind of show other kids the same thing. Like, and I'm not even a great golfer. That's the crazy part about it. I'm <laughs> decent, but I'm not great. But I, I try to uh, let the kids know there are so many ways to use the game of golf. It's not just playing golf, but being around other professionals on a golf course. Um, the, the thing about golf is such a social sport, just yeah. like me and you just talking right, right. here. There is no other sport in the world that I can have your attention for two and a half to four hours yeah. in a relaxed environment. We're in a basketball court. We might be going back and forth. We're on a football field. Yeah. I'm trying to take your head off on a golf course. We're just kicking it. We're just talking. Now, 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 now <laughs> please do this for me. So me and my coach, we go back and forth all the time. All right. And I always tell them, people who have never played golf mm -hmm. can't talk about people who choke right. on, the, on the golf course. You can't. You can't. You cannot. <laughs> You cannot. Golf is. <laughs> he I want, I want, <laughs> he did choke. He did not choke. You, you can't say that. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, <laughs> golf is, and I played a lot of sports, but if I'm being honest, golf is probably the hardest sport a person will ever play in their life. Your, your love for Sergio, would you have it for him? 
<laughs> but you did think he was gonna choke it away. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah I did. I did. I, I <laughs> thought at, at a certain point when I'm watching, I'm like, "Oh, they go Sergio being Sergio." Exactly. There it is, right there. Sergio being Sergio. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But I'm going to go if I can say that, though. I, yeah. I, right. I, I can say it. I'm I can some, say it. Because I showed you about the, I had it. I had it tight. You, 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 you were ready to press in. <laughs> press in. And then he wore I'm like, I can't even say yeah. that. Yeah. Hey, hey, man, we, we appreciate you coming oh, in, man. Please right. tell everybody where they can go and find out more definitely. about this program. So uh, you, everybody can visit our website. It's www.thefirsttatlanta.org. I'm going to spell it out. W-W-W-T-H-E-F-I-R-S-T-E-E. A-T-L-A-N-T-A dot org. Uh, registration opens up Tuesday at 9 a.m. via our website. We're also uh, having a community day on Saturday, May 6th over at the golf course. So for anybody who's interested in kind of learning about what it is that we really do, um, come on out. It's going to be a real, real fun day. I'll give you guys some information. Okay. You know what, Matthew, before we go, you know what I hate about him? He looks so relaxed in his outfit right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I dress, dress like a golfer. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> Major key alert. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchooled.com. Brought to you by Get Schooled and the Ad Council. When it comes to saving money, don't act like a baby. Goo goo gaga. Be the boss and make a budget. I'm the boss, baby. You're the boss of me. I am the boss of you. I'm not. M2. I'm not. M2. <laughs> Need a little help? Aren't you going to do any work? I'm very busy delegating. Create a personalized savings plan. We can share. You obviously didn't go to business school. And get other tools and tips at feedthepig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Marie Callender's knows that you may not have time to roll out dough for a perfectly flaky crust that's made from scratch. Or enough time to mix vegetables with all white meat chicken and a homemade gravy. She knows you may not have a moment to crimp the edges of your favorite chicken pot pie. But Marie Callender's does. And when she's done, all you need to do is find time to grab someone special. Sit down and savor. Marie Callender's. It's time to save. Coming to Tampa Bay, I said we want to win a Super Bowl, and I believe we will. From IamSecond.com. We came close, but never really did win that championship. Former NFL head coach Tony Dungy. At the end of my sixth year, I was fired, and it was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Next year, I'm in Indianapolis, get to the playoffs, but get knocked out again. And for the next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have Christ first and that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it. And it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm going to make it through the lens of Jesus Christ. And he got us to that ultimate victory. I'm Tony Dungy, and I am second. George, y'all need anything else? Sensation Station Network. This is Tracy Hutchins with CBS 46 News. You're listening to The Crush on Sensation Station Network. Hey, man. It's Wednesday. It's 9.07. And Always on time. I have time to get a little wisdom in our life. But the song going to be different next week, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sinead gave her the song. Yes. I looked at I just said. Thank you, Sinead. I just laughed. I said, there it is. Champ. <laughs> there champ. It is. Always the champ. Hey. Wait, what you got for this week? Man, you know what I want to talk about today? So, actually, a couple things. One, I need the kids to know that they need to be where they're supposed to be right now. Because guess what time it is? Well, yeah. they're they in the building. The college coaches are in the building guess now. What time Boy, it is yeah. Yeah. So, I, I do want to remind you all of that. That it's that time. But... Right now, um, I, I want to talk to my outgoing seniors. There are some things that th we've talked about this, but there are some things that you must do right now. A mm -hmm. um, couple things is you, if you signed a national letter of intent and you did not fill an, out an application to that school, you better check with the coach and see if that's something that you need to do mm -hmm. in addition to. That does not take the place of you actually applying to the school. You still may have to write an essay. You still may have to answer some questions. You it's a process that you have to go through. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and the National Letter of Intent does not excuse you from applying to school as a student. Right. Um, I got a lot of kids right now. Coaches are hitting me up. Hey, has so-and-so done this? And I'm like, 
I don't know. That's they mama now. <laughs> that's their mama now. That's all mama. So, right. Uh, um, mama, did you do it? Right. And so, it, and, and parents, as a part of that, you know, that includes you sending, if you did not send when they took their test, their score directly to the school Mm-hmm. and directly to the eligibility center. And I talked about that a little bit last week. Right. But this issue is come. I, I'm seeing it come up more and more. Your kid also has to go back and log into the eligibility center. It takes about three clicks once they're in, but they need to do their certificate of amateurism. And you cannot do that until after April 1st. So now you have to do it. But you have to do it to go to school. Mm. That is the last little piece that you must do before you can go off to school. So that's the message I need to give to everybody that's out going. Make sure you've applied to school. Make sure you've written that essay. Because they're trying to get you your ID number so they can go ahead and get you housing. Especially right. if you're on a scholarship. Right. Because a lot of kids, man, they basically they show up in June. They're coming in, they come in a month and a half from now. Right. Mm-hmm. You, you go into school a week after you graduate, two weeks after you graduate. And so all those pieces need to be in place. They need your ID number so they can give you housing. Right. Come so on, there's the, How often do you, when you, how often do you have to keep saying this and these kids? Because they kind of get to that point. We talked about senioritis. I was filling out applications today with kids. And it's April 19th. It's almost over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Like, they, literally. They made sure they had that car ready for the prom. I'm, I'm pulling out my car, paying your 1250 to get your score sent for you. Stop. Come on now. I tell mama that thing was thirty five ninety nine. dollars The double up. Like, no, it's just, I mean, it, it's a part of the process. You know, and it doesn't end. I think people think, oh, I'm signed. Yeah. I signed that letter of intent. I'm it's good. Been fast, and I'm good. And I'm they're good. done. And the parents are like, yes, we're done. We, you've made it. You're going to school. No, you're not. You're not done. The other part is, I had to give somebody this speech the other day. If you flunk three of your classes, your GPA has now dropped below where your SAT is right now. Mm. And so now you're no longer eligible. And now you're going to have to take another SAT. So, mm. while we thinking we made it, you haven't. You it, see, those grades matter. Finish strong. The, it, it, this last semester matters. Let and actually, around. if your GPA goes up, that actually helps you. Let me go around. Mama, I made it. No, you ain't. Hold on. Nah, nah, nah not yet. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. We still got a little cut, bit left. Cut the drink references out. <laughs> we got a little bit left. And so when I, I get kind of, I mean. It's frustrating. It, it, you would think this is, is the finish. I'm ready to go. I'm like, whatever I need to do. I, you know, because schools have their requirements. People don't understand that. They think just right. because I signed an LOI to play football. That's an institution of learning over there that needs you to do what they need you to do. You're a student <laughs> athlete. Yeah. And that's the thing. And I just to hear you say you're still filling it out, I, that is so crazy. That's crazy. I, but I think it's the nature of the beast. And these are not, and I'm not talking about kids just in my school either. I'm talking, I know. I, I'm, oh, I, I, help kids, I help kids yeah. out at other schools. Yeah. People are still just now filling out information. And I'm like, okay, I know your coach told you. I know that because they have to. So I know it because they have a million people, million of y'all to tell, like across the country. So I'm like, I know that's a part of your process. So did you just decide you weren't gonna do it? But like, what happened? Wow, get it over with, so you can enjoy your last few weeks as a student, man, at your high school. Come on, man. We don't do this Wilsons for us. We, we do, do it for, for y'all. y'all. For y'all. <laughs> when we come back, man. On top of it, parents. We're about to get into the recruit, man, because I don't know, man. Show sure. Coop was a lot. Of, he, was, he was a lot, man. Coop was hilarious. Wait. <laughs> way it turned up. Hey man, we come back. Stay with yep. us. Hey, Dr. Phil here. You know, I help people solve difficult problems every day, but one problem has me stumped. Childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. Luckily, the Feeding America network of local food banks collects surplus food, giving hope to hungry children and their families. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. My savings are gone. Okay, where were they last? Here, right before I spent them on the vacation to Aruba. Weird. Not weird. Not saving now means no money later. For free ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. 
Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You do your thing, all right? Don't be nervous, okay? It's easy. I'm just here so I won't get fined. I say that to say this. If you wouldn't have did what you would have did, then we wouldn't have been where we was at to get what we got. That just don't make no sense, dog. It's The Crush on SSNATL.com. Hey, man, we about to jump into this more recruiting talk. Before we jump into that, man, it is about 85 degrees today, make sure. Yes, sir. So all you people out there, you better call a lot of people at Simplify Heating and Air if you ain't got your air conditioning working, man. Hey, Everybody man. get hot, man. Simplify, you know, Simplify Heating and Air uh, combines comfort and quality when it comes to your heating and air. We provide free upgrade quotes. It will be any written quote by 5% by any reputable company. Also provide military discounts on any service. Go to Simplify Heating and Air. Simplify Heating and Air dot com for more information. Cause you know it's hot. It can hot, Mitchell, man. It's hot. Don't you know, be talking about my. I, we say the fan in the window don't work no more, do it? Oh no, <laughs> <Boy>. <laughs> just blowing hot. Yeah, you ain't doing them blowing that as outside. Yeah, that's you blowing hot air around. Yeah, you got lay on the floor. What's our hot topic? What's our not hot topic? What's our topic for the so man? Today? Kansas State head coach Bill Snyder. Uh, he did an interview and he he broke down his recruiting strategy and, and basically what he was saying. People were kind of shocked about how he's able to keep his program very competitive when he doesn't go after five-star, four- and five-star kids. So uh, four principles to his recruiting. The first thing he talked about, he only recruits kids from small towns. Mm. He said when he recruits kids from small towns, he feel like those kids have better work ethic mm. than, say, like, you know, city kids, kids who, you know, probably given a lot. Say kids, you know, they're hard workers from small towns. His second uh, point Kids who don't attend combines put on by recruiting services. Now, he was mm -hmm. big on this one because he basically said with these kids, these are your kids who are expecting something for nothing. Mm -hmm. And when you kind of look at his program, you, you kind of like, okay, well, you know yeah, what? Yeah. That, I mean, that makes sense because a lot of those kids really and truly, if, you, if you're not at the, the big tennis shoe Combine, yeah. you're not on you're not on college campus combine. If you go into these pay for come up most of the time, it's nobody there. Mm. And is it, somebody maybe maybe collecting data, but who are they sending the data to? Mm. We just don't know. Uh his third principle, kids who lack idea measurables as far as height, weight, forty time. He say a lot of times with those kids, these kids probably just hadn't developed. Right. Whereas you got this big kid who is probably peaked. And and, 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 he, and his ceiling is the roof. Right. His ceiling is the roof. And his final one, kids who play multiple sports. He say he doesn't recruit any kid who don't who, who just specialize in one sport. But we've been saying that. Yeah, we and and again, it's funny to hear. Bill Snyder has been coaching twenty six years. Yeah. Yeah. Has been very successful at he Kansas State. He is retired State. and come back. He retired and Coach came Cannon back. said today he about a hundred years old. Yes, he is. You but know, he, he got one of my kids. I got a kid going there this year. There you go. And it's probably a kid who probably kind of flew under the radar. He might be 81. <laughs> I was thinking, thinking about his age. <laughs> so when, 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 when you hear his philosophy, what do you think about his philosophy? I love it. I mean, I like those kids. I like these coaches that go out of the way to find these kids and pulling them in and let them keep living their dream and playing hard and developing. Like, to me, being a coach is about development. Can right. you develop these people further? And this is what I'm talking This is what it sounds like he – that's his goal. That's, that's what he does. Right. I'm going to get these kids, and I'm going to develop them, and I'm going to make them into something while they're here at my school anyway. I love I it. I love it. I love it. What do you think about it, Glaze? One thing I love about Bill Snyder, remember when he left, like Wendy said – that Kansas was terrible. Kansas State, Kansas State was terrible. program went down. He went come down. back, come backs. He come back, and they go into the bowl games. They were winning and all that. And it's interesting. He said it about small town. I always talk. Me and Mason, we you always talk about growing up in Atlanta, growing up in Lincoln. Right. We didn't have nothing, so football was life. Right. It was like makes it like man. We had to keep kids at our house on a Saturday night if it was a Saturday game. Was Saturday we, know, game. we had to take them home Friday night. Saturday night. It, 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 and for us, so I, I get the small town thing because, yeah. you know, and, and, and I love it because one of his greatest players was Darren Sproles. Mm -hmm. Darren Sproles. And what too many people going up there? Because nope. he was 5'10". How long yeah. has he been in the league, Mason? Yeah. Boy, he going on about eight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So I love his philosophy, and, and it works because when he left Kansas State, yeah. They suck. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was funny. You you look at a kid like Jordan. Jordan Nelson had no offers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Jordan Nelson goes to <laughs> Kansas State. I mean, he's an all pro in oh, NFL right. now. You look at Tyler Lockett. Yeah. Uh, Seattle. Yeah. Nobody. This kid had no offers. Yeah. He had he had one offer, mm-hmm. and it was to a mid major. He goes to Kansas State, and he becomes like Big Twelve Player of the Year. Yeah. He gets drafted, and he's dangerous in the NFL. Great return man. Because he does what Wendy said. He coaches the talent. He coaches, yeah. he coaches he's the talent. talent. He doesn't say he expects you to come in and just know it all. He, I'm going to make you a player. And and you it, want, and if you believe in his system. Yeah. And, and that's what's crazy because, again, this kind of goes back. All these kids, listen, everybody want to go to Georgia. Everybody want to go to Florida. Start looking at some of these other schools who welcome your talent. Right. And you're going to be on TV. And want to develop you. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. It's Rodell Lewis inviting you to join the Jen and Rodell in the ATL show on SSNATL.com as we simulcast with 247PraiseRadio.com Saturday starting at 8 a.m. Oh, my God! It's a taste of tradition where we play great gospel music, great artists, interviews, and a lot of fun. Oh, that's wonderful. So join Jen and Rodell in the ATL as we get our praise on 247PraiseRadio.com simulcasting on SSNATL.com. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You've accidentally cut your daughter's bangs unevenly. Do you, A, line things up a centimeter from her hairline? Man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. No, 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 no. Sweatbands are so hot right now. Everyone's wearing them. Like that basketball player and that other basketball player. B, get spiritual. Mom, where did all the mirrors go? A reflection could never capture our true selves. Huh? Beauty is within... Um. C. Look on the bright side. Less time blow drying, more time texting. Or D. Show empathy. Mom, you really don't have. Ta da! To... Twinsies. <laughs> I kind of love it. <laughs> As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Vince Lombardi once said that it's hard to be aggressive when you're confused. Some of us think that taking our lives to the next level, both personally and professionally, is a confusion and complicated process. Guess what? It's not, and I can prove it. My book, Truisms, will show you how living your life by rules that are so self-evident and obvious, you'll say, I knew that. This powerful yet short, detailed bestseller is on sale right now, under $10. Go to michaelmcfadden.com. That's michaelmcfadden.com, and let Truisms help you to the next level. Yo, it's your boy, Michael McFadden. If you hear my voice right now, that means you're tuned in to The Crush on Sensation Station Network. Shout out to them cowboys. Not for real. Maceo Glaze, what up? Hey, we back, man. Let me just ask this, Mace. You, 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 when you're coaching and you two winning, when you have a chance to talk to kids about certain programs, when you seek programs like this, don't you feel like you want to say, man, if they looking at you, you might want to take a hard look at this program and, and just, I mean. Why wouldn't you? I, yeah. I encourage them to. I'm like, hey, look, look all through this program and see what's going on before you say no to it. I, I've always been a fan of off the cup schools. Yeah, like everybody had these schools on their list. Nobody has these schools on their list. Like, you probably can go play. Yes, because I, I think that I always want the kids to go play. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's no good to go to this uh, major university and you never touch the field. Right. I mean, you never touch the field. And so many kids, we've seen so many kids, they sign. Yeah, they're going to tell you all this stuff. But, I mean, how you special teams <laughs> or less, and then you're done. And, you know, I, I've seen this happen over and over again in basketball and football. Kids sign to these big schools. They make all these promises, and they never, ever, ever see the floor or the or the. Or the um, field. Yeah. You know what's or they see it, like you said, special team. Yeah. So you're not seeing it as often as you thought you were. So you're third or fourth year special team. You see them. Right. And so and it's not that they weren't a good player coming out of school, out of high school. They were a good player, and they were recruited by a lot of good schools. You just didn't choose the right school for you. 
Right. Um, at, you know what I'm saying? And at the time, it may have seemed like the right school. But I think if you had looked further in to done some research that we're always talking about here on the show, found a school that was a good fit for you, you may have made a different choice and your your route may have been different. Right, would have been different. Because, I mean, everybody gets so caught up in, um, you know, and Willie talked about it last night. Everybody's so caught up about going to the league. Yeah. Focus. Get a scholarship first. Do your levels. Man. <laughs> get, a, get a scholarship God, first. Hey. That's a dream, but why not dominate each level first? Right. Focus on where you Be are. Be the right great now. high school first. Be the great high college next, and then whatever happens. Because Willis said he went to Georgia to do what? He just went to play. Nah, he was worried about his degree. Yeah. And you talking about a guy who dominated high school basketball? Yeah. Like he was that deal. It's gotta be great where you are. <laughs> right. And I guess and, and it's. I love coach like Coach Snyder because he ain't gonna fight you for the five star. Take them, but and that's what he said. Yeah, he said, yeah, and, 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 and one of the things he kept saying was like, "Why am I gonna go visit this kid that I have no chance again when you know he got thirty schools knocking yeah. down his door? I'm gonna go talk to him." And he talked about how he forged relationships with every high school yeah. coach, yeah, because that I mean he needs those guys. Like yeah. you know he can walk into a uh, school X that you know. Okay, Texas and all, they're not coming in here. So I don't have to be, oh, I got to get there early. Right. I, man, I can sit down and I can talk to any kid I want because nobody coming through here. Yeah. Boy, i tell you right now, we had a few when we had gas, but if Coach, if a coach like Snyder would have came to Lincoln County, what's cool? The vi- hey, Coach. <laughs> coach. <laughs> I let me. Because some of the schools get a lot of big time coaches go to certain schools all the time. Right. And he got that philosophy, man. That's, that's but but it's what we talk about all the time. You, you see the you see the same coaches. Yeah. They they <laughs> once they get a pipeline, they get like so. Illinois has a pipeline to Westlake now. They got two kids. Exactly they got right. two kids up there. Yeah, yeah. So now, what the first place Illinois go when they come here? They go to Westlake. They looking they looking for the next Julian. They looking for the next uh, what what what's our what's our kid name? Christian Abercrombie. They looking Abercrombie. for Abercrombie. Abercrombie. Yeah, yeah. They they are comfortable. <laughs> With that, like I well, said, what the, they're producing. Like I said, on the flip side, we sent the kid. I'm not gonna say, you know, I won't put the name because y'all y'all know the kid. But we sent the kid to say at school, and they were like, "We're never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> we're never coming back with the with what y'all sent us. Never. We're good. We're <laughs> never coming back over there. But co- never. Okay. Never <laughs> ever. Do do say. I don't care if he run a three four forty. We still not coming. <laughs> Let me ask y'all this because I, I always thought about that when the coach come and ask you and you sitting there like, which kid? <laughs> do I really want to mess this up or do we want to keep it going? I mean, that's you have to think about that. That's some extension of you that you letting go. Cause I ain't messing up my good name. <laughs> exactly. You better not mess up your good name. Hey, you sure, coach? Because they're going to talk about you in the street. <laughs> oh, now. what? They're going to talk about you. Man, I went to that school. Man, they, they all talk to each other. Yeah. Man, they, they, they dap each other up <laughs> when they're in the building together. Man, they, sent, they, they sent us buddy, man. Buddy needed about no mind. I'm, 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 right. I'm, I'm gonna get a kid away. Baby. Like, <laughs> hey, Dr. Phil here. You know, I help people solve difficult problems every day, but one problem has me stumped childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. Luckily, the Feeding America network of local food banks collects surplus food, giving hope to hungry children and their families. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Marie Callender's knows that you may not have time to roll out dough for a perfectly flaky crust that's made from scratch. Or enough time to mix vegetables with all white meat chicken and a homemade gravy. She knows you may not have a moment to crimp the edges of your favorite chicken pot pie, but Marie Callender's does. And when she's done, all you need to do is find time to grab someone special, sit down, and savor. Marie Callender's, it's time to say Indoor baseball, anyone? <laughs> Most party fouls are pretty dumb, but if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your fr- And the ad council. If you're looking for that ratchet, you're in the wrong place. It's the nation's urban internet station, sensation station network. Hey, what's up?
what's up? It's your boy Killer Mike, Killer Kier from the Ville. You're checking me out right now on the Sensation Station Network. Make sure you tune in, suckers. Hey, man, we're back, man. Still hitting that recruit 101 for y'all peoples out there. Hope you're listening in, tuning in, man, because I'm giving you this knowledge for free. Man, it ain't for free. There it is. Make sure what you got for us, man. So, uh, uh, big button going on right now, man. Uh, verbal offers and commitments. So, you know, it's that time of year. Mm-hmm. Guys, are, you know, they're giving their verbals. Uh, schools are looking for that uh, commitment from you. Talk about it a little bit, Wendy. So the thing is, um, you know, is what it, it, it the term I'm trying to think is used to describe um, when a college bound student athlete right um, wants to commit to a school before they're able to sign. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, that national letter of intent, mm-hmm. and so you can actually do a verbal. At any time. You can do a few verbals. Yeah. Yeah. You can do a verbal at any time. Yeah, you you, you got a list to prove it. And, and, they're, and they are very popular. Right. They are very popular. The only thing is, it's not binding. Not binding. On either the student athlete or the school. A lot of things can change. And that's what people have to understand. It is not binding. Only this, The only thing that's binding is that letter. When you sign that piece of paper. Yeah. That is what's binding, and it is copied by that financial aid agreement. Right. And so I always say this real quick, Wendy. Unless, <laughs> unless you are the number one player in the world in everybody's eyes, you need to really ask these schools. This is how you find out if they really, really, really going to stick by you or you going to stick by them. But will they hold a scholarship for you? Yeah. You better ask. Better ask. If they give you the run around. Nah. They start, uh, 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 <laughs> don't do it. And I think that's what a lot of kids don't understand. They be going around pumping their chest. I just made a verbal commitment. The school could take it from me. Yeah. They yeah. think it's something that is, the school could be like, yo, we just found us another commitment. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm going to tell you what's funny. Come back for it. Because I, I have a relationship with a, 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 a lot of coaches. And then, you know, a lot of guys who kind of really do, do this thing. And, of course, we on Twitter, we see a lot. We're blessed to receive this mm-hmm. offer, blessed to see. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, you can call that coach. Like, you know, I can call such and such and be like, hey, y'all offer them. Like, no, no, no. Nah. So kids have to really be careful with that. And, and everybody's watching. Yes. So, I mean, you know, unless they came, unless they sat down and was like, hey, listen. We are offering you. We we sending you this nice, pretty, yeah. yeah this was on the table for you, sir. right? If they not doing that, listen. Just because they sent you an interest letter, that's not an offer. Yeah. You know when it's an offer. Mm. An offer is very specific. Very too. specific. It, um, you know, they usually tell you, uh, give you a little more detail on what is being offered to you. Versus just saying, hey, we're interested. Why don't you come to one of our camps at the school? Uh, why don't you and your parents come up on an unofficial, whatever? Like, that's that's just talking. That's interest. Right. It's very different. You know what I don't like about offer sometimes? It sometimes uh, makes a humble kid get cocky. I've ran into a few so far. Yeah. That before they got these offers, they were very, hey, how you doing? Now it's, man... Stop, man. You still got to work, man. Right. You still live you a junior. You still got to work that same year. Bro. And it's funny you say that because you can't tell a kid enough. Listen, it's still work to be done. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, you did, again, you hadn't signed anything. Nothing. I've seen people, and, and I've actually seen people to a verbal, and then I see them playing that senior year, and I'm like, <laughs> y'all still want him? Because Are you they, sure? Because they will change their mind. Yes. Yeah. They would change their mind, and I think that's one of the problems I do have with it, yeah. because it's still so much more work to be done. I'm like, you know, you can't stop lifting weights. You no. can't stop because somebody else is getting can't better. Stop working out, and and like I say, you 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 committed as a junior. Yeah. So you still have your senior season to play. Say your senior season sucks. Yeah. Then what? Because then the coach is gonna look and say, okay, this guy, when he has adversity, he has opportunity. He don't play it to his level no more. It, it goes down. Volumes, it speaks volumes. Let me start looking somewhere. 
Because best believe somebody outworking you. And somebody's somewhere. working for that scholarship. Right. Till you got a pen in your hand and paper and you sign. So don't don't get the big head because you, cause you verbally head. committed somewhere hey, now. But calm down. Be humble. You be on that news on Twitter. Go uh, for these new NCAA rules. Oh, here we go. We're about to talk about when we come back. Yes, sir. Stay with us. My savings are gone. Okay, where were they last? Here, right before I spent them on the vacation to Aruba. Weird. Not weird. Not saving now means no money later. For free ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a warm place on a cold I want to be day. a football stadium. I want to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool. And by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. JBT 700 Miami Circle 30324. It's not a chain, it's a chain reaction. Invest $49 a month at a real gym. For more info, go to facebook.com forward slash jeans body tech. I'm Nicole Carr with Channel 2 Action News, and you're listening to The Crush on the Sensation Station Network. Comedian right now. Yeah, boy. Hey, super comedian. I forgot she was old. I'm like, cool, cool. Hey, that's what I thought. Hey, so, man, and Wendy, we about to jump into these new rules right now, man. So, Wendy, uh, uh, the NCAA, they approved early signing period, and they got a few other changes to the recruitment. Let's talk about them. All right, so first one, they changed the recruiting calendar to allow for an early signing period in December. It's going to be effective August 1st. Yes, sir. Um, only the Collegiate Commissioners Association can create new letter of intent signing period. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a part of that. Um, now they've added a period for official visits that begins April 1 of the junior year. Right. Mm. And ends the Sunday before the last Wednesday in June of that same year. Mm-hmm. Um, so say that again. So it starts... Um, it starts April 1 of the junior year okay. and ends the Sunday before the last Wednesday in June of that year. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So, like, from, like, spring to yeah, summer. to summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. to mm-hmm. summer. Cut um, it down for count. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, official visits can't occur in conjunction with the prospect's participation in a school's camp or clinic. Mm. That rule won't go into effect until this year for August 1st. So, we really, you'll be picking up the juniors right. uh, coming up. So, what's that, the class of 2019? 19. 2019. 2019. 2019. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2019. Um, uh, here's a new rule. <laughs> this one got me. Preventing football uh, FBS schools from hiring people close to a prospective student athlete for a two-period before and after the students anticipated an actual enrollment at the school. Basketball already had this rule. Basketball already had it, and, yeah. football, and the reason football did pick it up because what what they found out, and, uh, and they right. can thank Michigan State for this, Right. Uh, <laughs> hire a guy who has a plug to a guy coming along. So let me get him on campus first. Let me get him a job. Right. Let me create him a job. Right, create. Create him a job. Give him a nice salary. So that ensures that I will get that kid. That, that pipeline keep that, going. That pipeline. And like you say, basketball, they had to cut this out of basketball. Because this is what was happening in the basketball. I about to ask. I was like, that sound like that need to be in basketball too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Basketball got <laughs> it. Basketball, basketball actually got it. got it in 2010. Right. Okay. So it's yeah. been there. Yeah. Um, and that's actually one that's effective immediately. It had to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know who I think about, Mace? Ben Simmons coach. That's how right. LSU got him. Because yeah. they hired, LSU hired him for some position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Ben Simmons was ninth grade. They've been watching him. And then all of a sudden, Ben Simmons Well, they just LSU. got me. Uh, school wanted me. And they, they actually couldn't hire me. Nope. Look at this NCAA saying we're going to do that. Because, I mean, it, it, it gives an advantage. Yeah, man. Yeah. It gives an advantage. Because every school can't do it. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's just FBS schools. So, but th- I mean, there are some other schools out there. But still, that takes up a good number of the yeah. schools. Yeah. 
Now, they ain't say you can do it in FCS. Right. Just FBS. Right. Yeah. So now I got to go do some research. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you. you just do it. All right. Uh, football subdivision, um, FBS schools would be limited to signing 25 prospective and current student athletes to a first-time financial aid agreement or NLI. Exceptions would exclude current student athletes who have been enrolled full-time at the school for at least two years and prospective or current student athletes who suffer an incapacitating injury. And that's effective for recruits who sign after August 1st, 2017. They're not playing no games with these people. Mm-mm. They're not playing no games. So limited to signing 25. Um, limiting the time for FBS um, coaches to participate in camps and clinics. We talked about this earlier. We, we knew this one was coming. Oh, yeah. 10 days in June and July. and requires that the camps take place on a school's campus or in facilities regularly used by the school for practice or competition. Staff members with football-specific responsibilities will be subject to the same restrictions. The um, football championship subdivision can conduct and participate in camps during the months of June and July. Mm. This is effective immediately. Amen. <laughs> if they had a contract in place before January 18th, they can honor that contract. But all of us, mm-mm. And, 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 and this is a byproduct of satellite camps. Satellite camps. You know, uh, I think it's funny. <laughs> Jill, how about you? Can't you can't come in our backyard and right. get our kids no more. Set up, set up, set up camp. But you know what's funny? Saban was like, "We need to stop that." And when Saban starts talking, the rules like, "All right, let's start right now." But, but like, people <laughs> have to understand this about Nick Saban. Nick Saban was one of those guys. Matter of fact, Nick Saban and Urban Meyer were basically really the only guys who really like took the heart to recruit. Oh yeah, yeah. like. So they didn't need satellite camps because mm-hmm. they travel, but they have that kind of travel mm-hmm. budget. Oh, they budget well. They got right. a good budget. Yeah. So I mean, you know, like, like watching the uh, one that not done. You see Calipari getting to the private <laughs> jet, and he gonna make three stops. Every, and, and but that's why they bring this rule because everybody don't have those resources. Right. Everybody don't have them. Yeah, they don't come into Hartsfield. They come into Cobb or the Cab, them, them airport. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, them where, you, where, you, where you see Jordan playing all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, one other one, uh, it's three more, but we'll, I'll just do this one. Ca- allowing coaches employed at a camp or clinic to have recruiting conversations with prospects, participating in camps and clinics, and requires educational sessions at all camps and clinics detailing initial eligibility standards, gambling rules, agent rules, and drug relations. And that's effective really, immediately as well. All right, when we come back, man, we're going to finish the other three. We got three more or two more? Two more. Two more. Stay with us. Major key alert, life is like school. You will be tested, so pass it. Learn the real Major JBT 700 Miami Circle 30324. It's not a chain, it's a chain reaction. Invest $49 a month at a real gym. For more info, go to facebook.com forward slash jeans body tech. So five tacos of cheese and a large soda, that's $10,012. Please drive around. Wait, 10000 what? It's obvious you're buzzed and driving. I've only had a few. I'm fine. Yeah, the food's 12 bucks, but getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Please drive around. Actually, just park and come in. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, and father of five. I'm also an expert on drama. There's the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids, and there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. And lead the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Listen, as a hiring manager, I've got to tell you, the best job candidate isn't always the typical candidate. Sometimes they're a grad of life. Meet the grads of life. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Sometimes the best candidates aren't the ones you're used to. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Hey, this is Teddy Parrish, and you're listening to The Crush on SSNATL.com. 
Hey, man, we're still here, man. Wendy, let's go ahead and finish up those last two. All right, so the other one, uh, last one, oh, well, sorry, second to last, allowing football um, subdivision schools, football bowl subdivision schools to hire a 10th assistant coach. Now, that one won't come into effect until January 9th, 2018. Mm-hmm. So, that'll be after season. two uh, two seasons. We mm-hmm. got two seasons to so yeah, get out right. for that one to kick in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, we got one season. So, they'll be able to have a 10th uh, coach assistant next season. Okay. Not this coming up season. Okay. And then the last one is they uh, the council voted to eliminate two a days in the preseason. Wow. So I wish I could be playing this era right here. Cause we so had three a days. Wait, go back to that last one. They they counseling. T- the council voted to eliminate two a days in the preseason. That, that, that's all the concussion protocol and yeah. the time that these kids are spending on the field. But again, all 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 this does. I mean, make the summers harder. It's right. You're gonna have to because if the kids disciplined enough to get themselves in shape. And stuff like that. The two a day was mainly to get you in shape. To get you in shape. But see, but that's what off season. See, off season, off season program and the summer program now. So when you go to camp, you already it's yeah. a, it's a go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they're gonna really get off season gonna have to be. Yeah, yeah. right. They're gonna really. So I mean, you know, all, all this does is. You're not on the field, but best believe you're gonna be at the facility. You're gonna be doing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You have to do something. Chalkboard work. You're gonna, gonna be strong. Yeah. You're gonna be in the weight room. Oh, so I mean, yeah, yeah you're not be on. You're not on the field, yeah. but you're gonna still be working. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. NCAA man. Yeah. Yeah. You gonna work whatever man. You are gonna be on some treadmills. <laughs> something they gonna have you. Oh, you're gonna be doing to. something. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be doing you something. Gonna be working. But uh, this comes back to they trying to limit contact. Yeah. Uh, concussions, concussions and all of this stuff that I mean, they they that has everybody scared. Yeah. What's it called? CT. CT. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, and kids and they're talking about. I mean, there are people trying to get money on the college level now. You ever, yeah, they got they they try to put a lawsuit together for college guys. Yeah. I got footage of my uh, concussion, so but you know, I'm, uh, if, hey, you better sign up. Well, best believe I'm signing. I can't see now. Matter of fact, I got night night. Uh, where am I? I went night night. Yeah. I went night night at Lane College a few times. Uh. What what happened? Where 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 are we? <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> so I'll pull up for no no no. See that game right there? That's me. That me. Yeah man. But that that second two of day, you used to hate them because you be sore after that first week. You'd be like, we gotta go back at that three o'clock. It'd be hot and. But you gotta think them first three days we had four days. Yeah, we did. We wake up at five in the morning. You had you had that morning. You had that morning conditioning. Mm-hmm. Eat breakfast. Come back special teams. Mm-hmm. Come back. Then you got practice, mm-hmm. lunch, then practice again. That's all you yeah. do. Or to just be sweaty and stinking around that man. I, I wish I could play in this area right here, man. <laughs> but I'm talking about boy. You talking about I ain't got to go. I ain't got to do two days. So let me ask you this. Let me be oh, Gucci. Not, not to be be a petty, but how many uh, coaches are you trying to look at these rules like? I can get around that. Oh, they're not already built. They already know how they're gonna build them. They, 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 they didn't they, say they, this though. When they, 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 they were already on the table, they was already figuring out. Okay, yeah, but they didn't say we could do this though. Yeah, they ain't say that. I think the biggest part of those rules right there, the the early sign of period. Yeah, yeah. The early sign of period is going to be real crucial because I think with early sign, you're gonna see the big dogs sign. Early, yep. and then, again, that's gonna allow schools to kind of look at. Okay, well, I got these kids yeah. in the fold. Now let me see. Eh, I might not like that kid no more because mm-hmm. this kid signed. I already right. got him. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna see. Remember when we was talking about early when we first what show five? Right. <laughs> we were talking about they talking. On the date for it yet, but we know it will be in December sometime. Yeah, so, so you're looking at a, a it wasn't coming about two months early, yeah. mm-hmm. two two months before the, the mm-hmm. February. One. And they'll probably do it right before they get out of Christmas break. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it'll probably be around. So like, right, it'll probably time. be right when the season ends. If yeah. you think about it, because um you usually in playoff times anyway. Yeah, state championship is always like their first or second week in December. Yeah. You see kids win a state championship and be like, all right, let me go ahead and pick my school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're gonna be committing on the on, on the stage. <laughs> on the stage. Here's my letter. Yeah. Here go that hat. <laughs> No oh, we know where he going. No longer a high school student no more. Yeah, man. Then if you get to sign the application. Hey, man, Mayor Johnson crazy, man. Mayor, Mayor talking about uh, Mario Brown, we still had to apply for that Pell Grant, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all scholarship, baby, yeah. still got to apply oh, for that Pell Grant. Get, you supposed to get that now. No, nah, we, nah, we ain't get that now. We ain't get that back. No, that did, that went into your that part that went to your scholarship. Oh. Congress, I need you to go ahead and get that Pell Grant so we can put that <laughs> in your own. And then I can take some of that money and give it to him. So. <laughs> It was a job. We'll be right back. Coming to 
Tampa Bay. I said we want to win a Super Bowl, and I believe we will. From IamSecond.com. We came close, but never really did win that championship. Former NFL head coach Tony Dungy. At the end of my sixth year, I was fired, and it was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Next year, I'm in Indianapolis, get to the playoffs, but get knocked out again. And for the next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have Christ first and that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it. And it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm going to make it through the lens of Jesus Christ. And he guide us to that ultimate victory. I'm Tony Dungy, and I am second. George. Y'all need anything else? Sensation Station Network. <laughs> Going to that crush recap brought to you by Blunt Power. With Blunt Power, three sprays last for days. You can find out more about Blunt Power at their website, bluntpower.com, or go to their Facebook or Twitter page at Blunt Power. So let's start with our people on. We're going to keep on for a minute. What did you learn today with Coach Cooper? Well, I learned that real ballers keep their socks pulled all the way up. <laughs> And there it is, people. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> Real ballers keep their socks all the way up. Don't keep them down. Keep them up. Man. Keep them all the way up. Uh, all the way up. <laughs> what else you have for us, Cam? Mm. You going to be making more money by the time you get to the WNBA? Yeah. yeah. What was the rule? What did he tell you? By the time you make it, it'll be how much, you say? Around three thousand. Three hundred. Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. For about four months for of work. Four months of work. Uh, don't cheat yourself. Yeah. Please don't cheat yourself. All I want is I don't want to hit nothing Wendy be like, I don't know. Look, Wendy, I got the videos of y'all on the show. So don't be Listen, trying to act all brand new. All, all Uncle Maceo want, when you get that shoe deal, I just, I just need me a size 11 cent to the house every month. <laughs> just whatever. What, and whatever color. Whatever color. I'm just like, you know, I'm just like, you know, hey. You know she don't wear them a Nike, so. That, that, I mean, hey, all I'm saying is, and, and I need a couple of uh, T-shirts and shorts. So make sure like, he already influenced with the hat. You see that? Right. They already right. trying to influence Nike. over there. Right. She a Nike girl through and through anyway. Without a doubt. Hey, man, sure. what else you got for us, man? Nike. So, man, you know, a couple of stories real quick, man. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal's son, Sharif, mm -hmm. he's committed to the University of Arizona. Yep. You know, hey, you know. This is senior this year, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. senior right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was uh, one of the uh, big stories. And Shaq was, uh, <laughs> you know, Shaq said, you know, hey, I'm going to have to become an Arizona fan. But, you know, hey. Proud of his son, and they're, they're going to be happy to have Shaq on campus. Oh, sure. man. Oh, man. Yeah, they're going to buy You got to love that. Shaq on the air. He's going to be bigger than, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you got to love that. Uh, Ohio State, at their spring game uh, Saturday, they sold 82,000 tickets. Wow. And they packed it out. Packed a big, hey, big time ball. program. I mean, um, football real up there. Oh, yeah. Ain't no Stupid. Joke. Man, football is real. From Stupid. The, from the talent Stupid. to the fans to the people they put in the league. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. It's and, and if, if y'all still, y'all still ain't watched the show I told y'all to watch. Y'all still ain't watched it. We got to tag y'all in it again. Okay, man. But if on the show, Tate Martell, uh, that kid that was uh, at Bishop Gorman, mm -hmm. uh, he didn't he didn't show so well at the Ohio State spring game. Wow. And they had people looking like, this this, this what we brought in? Oh, Okay. Okay. You go back, though, Mace, but I think going to that next level is easy, man. It's wrong me and be waiting for you when you get Listen, man, you, you're you a 5, you 5'10". That's <laughs> some change. Bro, this this college, it's not high school no more. No yeah. more, man. There's no more. It's a whole all, different ball game. Yeah, all your national championships that you won in high school? Nothing. Hey, man. Uh, another story, uh, uh, Louisville quarterback Kyle Bowling, he's going to transfer. Oh, is he? Yeah, he, he, he has realized, you know what? Lamar Jackson is the guy. Yeah, kind of. Uh, he told he told Coach Petrino, you know what? Let these other young guys get reps in the spring. I just hang out over here, show flashcards, yeah. just hang out. I'll help you out. I'm transferring. I'm gone, Coach. I'm out. I'm out. But again, this is when you know, hey, 
You gotta look at these depth charts and you gotta understand. Right. But he 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 will be getting this degree, so oh, well, so cool. yeah, so he gonna okay. he, so he gonna be up out of there, man. That's cool. You know, uh, other that story right here, here, man. What's that coat? I said, nah, get that degree, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, we always talk about exposure, man. Uh, Steph Curry, uh, he he he, he, he sat down with an interview and he reflected on. How he became a good college player, how he became a, a good pro. He said he was always around. His dad allowed them to be in NBA locker rooms on the weekend. Say, hey, I learned the game. I practiced with NBA guys. I got to see how they did. So that maturity helped me in college. Mm -hmm. Helped me in the NBA. Expose you, everybody. Expose you, man. We have to expose these kids. Got to. We, we had say a, it all the time. Had a guy in yesterday, Willie. First thing he said, man, I used to see Steph them all the time out there yeah. shooting ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because. That's what. That's why we know this one's gonna be good. Yeah, but but <laughs> but it's funny is yeah. taking advantage of your unofficial visit. Yeah, yeah. like yes. you you have you have so many opportunities to go see these colleges. You listen, you can get access to them. Email the email addresses are there. The phone numbers are there. Wait a minute, man, I just had a flash a flash forward with Wendy and. Jeff going to do they uh these official <laughs> Listen, Listen, when when they gonna walk in with a, a book, with a notebook, with a type with a book. Up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, let me get to that question. Yeah, let, me, let, let, uh -oh. let, let, let me know this. Uh -oh. Let 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 me know this. It's gonna be embarrassed. The camera probably gonna be like, Mom. Okay, Mom. I told no, you. I'm gonna take your book from you. <laughs> go have to. I can move. Right. I, I I don't think you're gonna do that. No. I think it's gonna she, be typed up yeah, and ready to go. I think I think she's gonna, gonna be, be like, ready. you know. And you know, uh, UGA, we gonna you know find out. Jacob Eason, year two. They talking about how Jake Fromm is pushing Wish him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but they a lot of quarterbacks who they have on their board for 2018, 2019. A lot of those kids are looking away from Georgia, quarterback wise, because they're figuring that you know what? They straight. Why am I going to Georgia? Wow, well, um, what's the left handed quarterback they had? Who, David Green? David Green was as good because he had Shockley right behind him the whole time. Yeah, pushed yeah. him. They were like, Shockley. Listen, they were like, you mess make, up. You make one mistake. <laughs> mess up. I got Shockley. Shockley in. <laughs> and, and, and guess what? We're going to still win. Yeah. Right. Still going to win. And that's why I know Easton like, boy, that boy still can throw that, that Jake, ball. Drake front, pretty good. But <laughs> it, it kind of hurts their recruiting because now yeah. they won't have a quarterback yeah. coming in yeah. next year and they won't be signing one <laughs> the year after that. No. So they say they got their eyes on 2020, which will give almost a two-year gap yeah. between you – now you have – of course, you got Easton from, and then you, you know, put it some – it's just crazy. I'll tell you one thing, position they don't hurt is running back. I'm like, can y'all not look at the depth chart at running back? I'm trying to tell you. It's man. deep. I'm it's trying to tell Elijah Holyfield, man, you need a red shirt, bro. <laughs> Relax, you need, man. You need a red shirt. Say you a year, man. You need a red shirt. Cameron, before we go, what are your three college choices right now? UConn. South Carolina and uh, I can see, do you I, even have a third one? I can see you at South Carolina. I got, I do have one. I think it's it it was it was Syracuse. Oh, okay. oh, you go way to New York. They just we got family up there. Should be right. Oh, okay. Well, hey, not just, that far up, but we got family in New York. Okay, okay, the okay. Green just picked them up in uh, Syracuse, ladies. Yeah, okay. and, and, you know, hey man, coach, <laughs> coach all in on Cameron. Oh, he already said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, you know, hey, Cameron, last one, I move. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You would. That is, you, yeah, you, yeah. She the last one. Everybody yeah. else be in school already. You may have two Olympians and a WNBA basketball player. I needed them to do something. That's dope. We call it the uh, the uh, Mama Ty. the Deion Sanders effect. <laughs> somebody got to get a scholarship. Some, somebody got to do something. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I only got money for one. <laughs> hey, you know what I told him? I don't have none. <laughs> All y'all better have it together. Grades and work. What Deion Sanders say? I got money for one. The rest of y'all. Got to get scholarship. Keep him out. Keep all the maze. I need all this thing in order. Hey man, we want to thank. Michael Cooper, man, that was that was awesome. He's man. a comedian. That, that comedian. was. That was. I awesome. never, I never imagined he would be that funny. I'm scared of knowing about some of them stories about the forum story. Yeah, yeah, ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh. I meant to ask him about that picture of Magic Johnson. That that picture of Magic with the fur on, with Tyson and all these. Like, <laughs> like come on, like where where were y'all going? He, he said was, he coming back though. 
We're going to say that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll definitely say that one. Uh, I, sh- shout out to Coach Jenkins, man, for First T. Yes, sir. You have no excuses. He has broke every excuse. $75 Plus. for what? Down to 10, 10 weeks. 10 weeks. 10 weeks, $75. So 35 for the shirt. Right. 110 And y'all still, on a, can't, and y'all on still a, can't get the J's. On a Saturday. On a Saturday. Still can't get the J's for 110 So you might as well not stand in line and go <laughs> sign your kid up, man, for First T. Hey, man. Thank you, Nikki. Welcome back, Heather. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. back. <laughs> welcome to Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you, Killer Cam. Our special correspondent <laughs> who took over the Atlanta Dream Draft Party. We call it Junior Buckets. Right. <laughs> Everybody want to get a picture with her. Everybody. Everybody. Thank you, Mace. What a week, man. Great week, guys. Hey, man, great week. Hey, next week, hey, bro. It, 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 could, be, it, it yeah. could be crazy again next week. Nate Weeks will be. We can't even talk about it. And truly, the dome ain't got no roof. The dome ain't got no roof. We'll be right back. For real. See y'all Monday. Yo. Peace.